You can view them as tiny factories, the cancer stem cells. Factories that continuously produce new, non-functional cells that are dangerous to us. The factories Tua Sfioretos is talking about are blood cancer stem cells. Good to see you here, yeah. because I need to sew something for yeah. you. And here, at the Biomedical Center in Lund, is where they cultivate blood cancer stem cells. This is doctor and research scientist Tua Sfioretos. If you can stop these cells from growing and producing new cells, uh, you, you will achieve a cure. Leukemia is the collective name for several different types of blood cancer. And there are several different types of vital cells in the blood. The ones that make sure blood coagulates if we're injured, platelets, and those that transport oxygen to all parts of the body, the red blood cells, and then those that protect the body against viruses and bacteria, the white blood cells. But with blood cancer, the stem cells form masses of maldeveloped blood cells, which then take over and prevent healthy blood cells from doing their job. When the cancer cells grow, they will affect the normal blood system and, and the patient will lose the ability to fight infections and then you will also have lower amount of red blood cells, so you cannot oxygenate your blood. And it's also a high risk for bleedings because you, you're not producing thrombocytes, we call them, those that clog the blood. Scientists have struggled to understand and beat blood cancer for nearly 200 years. It began when doctors discovered patients with what they called milky blood. And when they looked at the blood under a microscope, one could see that it contained too few red blood cells. At the same time, there was an abundance of white blood cells. But they weren't working as they should. They were the result of cancerous stem cells. The German doctor Rudolf Virchow named the disease leukemia, white blood. And today, the death rate from this disease is still high. The difficulties in leukemia is it's so many different types of, of disease and they have different genetic lesions in the cells and blood cancer cells. So it's not easy to find one type of treatment. We need to understand these different types in order to, to treat them in a more targeted way. To help him, Tuas Fioretos has a whole arsenal of machines. And here we have robotics. So I will show you one of the favorite instruments we have here in the lab. It allows us to study individual cells. With this one, Tuas Fioretos is looking for the Achilles heel of the cancerous stem cells. Raising the Tobago's, we growing like fresh tomatoes. Them boys on fire, two fuego, we pass it round hot potato. Everything is new. We are in, in Lund. It's a very good uh, place to do research. I mean, there's people from all over the world studying. These cells, you could call them mother cells, you could call them stem cells. If we could hit on those only, there would be no leukemia. We want to find some flags on these cells. There are thousands of flags on the surface of the stem cell, but one has proven to be particularly interesting. It is a protein which looks friendly, one which is located on the surface of our body's defense cells that can detect and kill threats, T cells. In this case, the protein makes the T cells perceive the cancer stem cells as one of them, thus harmless. Tuas wants to knock out that function so that the T cells confusion ends and the cancer cell factory can be destroyed.
This we have shown in test tubes, and the goal is really to move this quickly forward for a future treatment. If all goes well, Tuas Fioretos believes that such a treatment can become a reality in five to ten years. But if that doesn't come true, his research team is already looking for other markers that future cancer treatments could target. I love doing what I do. I think it's extremely rewarding. And also, they, they grow. They grow differently. Yeah. Right? They, it's fantastic to be able to work with problems that affect so many people and trying to achieve a cure in the end.